what was that battle? 340 men killed, zero losses. How? We did a landing. What have we done to you, CK2? What have we done? This game's broken now. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're playing Crusader Kings 2. Now, normally when we play Crusader Kings 2, we play as the legendary 100 stat man, an ultimate lord of power who cannot be defeated by basically anything. Instead, I'll be demonstrating for you a absolutely perfect strategy to destroy all sense of balance that CK2 has to offer. And of course, I'll be using the power of tea to do it. Mmm. Mm. Now that's some good Yorkshire tea. So what will I be demonstrating today in Crusader Kings 2? Well, I'll be showcasing the easiest way to basically conquer the entire world. Now, of course, what it comes down to to conquer a world, you're going to need manpower, you're going to need big armies, and you're going to need to invade a lot of places. But in order to have a big army, this game would make you think, well, you need to have a lot of vassals, you need to have castles which are upgraded and quite civilized, and then you can have a larger army. But no, that's completely wrong. Instead, to have a larger army, you need to use retinues. That's right, a system which is completely and utterly garbage which no one else in the game uses. Mostly because retinues are very expensive and offer you very little reward for having them. Also, you can't even really have enough of them to have a good army. But alas, all of that's unimportant, ladies and gentlemen. For today, I, the Spiffing Brit, will be taking you on a merry adventure through Crusader Kings 2 as we conquer the lands and demonstrate the perfectly balanced power of the Germanic pagan raiding retinue. So without further ado, let us sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea, and hey, if you're feeling downright majestic and wanting to support the world conquest, then you might have even liked the video. Remember, liking the video guarantees you service in the retinue, and service is mandatory. So, let's dive into this fantastic game. Now, we're going to start a brand new game in the Viking Age. It's a nice time, it's 867 AD, and the world looks a bit funky. You might not particularly recognize it, because it's a bit of a mess of history. I mean, what on earth is a Kumania? But you've never heard of that, and you're even less likely to have heard of the legendary Googe. I mean, I've never heard of Googe, if I'm honest. Googe kind of sounds like the next hip way to refer to a friend, like, sup, my Googe? Okay, do not go into the comment section and call each other Googes. That, that would make me immensely uncomfortable. But nonetheless, the world in 867, it's good, it's fun, it's exciting. The Vikings are invading England. You've missed a half down over here of Jorvik, just absolutely shredding up the entirety of Northumbria, Mercia, and Wessex. So the Viking invasion is in full swing, and it's very exciting. However, we're not actually going to be partaking in any of that, we're actually going to be starting our own fantastic journey over here in Sverker Engelmanland. I know, what a lovely province it looks like. It's horrific because it's in Sweden, so it's freezing cold and it has no development, but trust me, this is actually the best province to launch a world conquest out of, and I'll demonstrate as to why soon. Now, we're going to be creating the perfect ruler, because whilst I'm sure that Sverker of Angermanland... Oh my god, I just realised it's Angermanland! It's where all the angry people come from! What a perfect province! Thank you, Sweden! Swedes for inventing this. Oh, we need to create ourselves the legendary hero who's going to take us on a glorious adventure. This man looks like a gnome. Oh, he's fantastic. What a glorious being. And of course, we'll keep the same coat of arms because that looks great. First name. You know what? Considering that he's actually decided to take some time off from the royal family, we're actually going to be led by Prince Harry himself from that's right, the royal family. So it's Harry Windsor. What a great guy. He's going to be leading the glorious tribe of Angerman land into just taking over the entire world. Now, in order to do so, he's going going to need a good education. We're going to make this guy a tough soldier. He's going to know what to do when it comes to the fighting. But most importantly, we need to give him a couple of traits which are going to make him very powerful. Firstly, bam, this guy needs a stutter because it shaves four years off of his life. I know, this is how the game works. You want to be 19 years old, you just got to have a stutter. You don't want to be 23, trust me. Quickly develop yourself a stutter and you'll suddenly lose four years off of your life. Equally so, if you want to become deceitful for whatever reason, two years will be shaved off of your life and you'll suddenly be a 17-year-old. Now that we've done all all of that, it's all about making sure that we end up with as much prestige as physically possible. I know it doesn't really make sense to be playing CK2 with a focus on just having a prestigious character, but prestige is effectively going to become our currency for this game. Gold, it has its uses. Prestige, however, mwah, now that thing is majestic. In order to get a lot of prestige, we need to give ourselves a lot of prestigious things, like being proud. There you go, that's going to add five years to our life, but trust me, it's necessary. We are going to make ourselves wounded, and that's how you 
actually quite an important trait because wounded is going to let us hopefully heal ourselves and end up with just having a scar because scars mean more prestige. And there we go, fantastic. Harry of Windsor, he's been pimped out. He has a stutter, he's a bit deceitful, he's left-handed, but he's proud, wounded, cruel, but most importantly, he's a pirate. This man is going to be pumping out some of that glorious prestige for us. You know what? I think he's perfect and ready to go. And well, bam, let's throw ourselves into the game. Now, we're just going to be using the basic set rules, and I won't be turning on Iron Man mode, but you know, you can. If you want to get achievements from this, go for it. So, welcome to Crusader Kings 2, ladies and gentlemen. Immediately, graphically, this game is going to look utterly disgusting if you're not used to looking at maps. But trust me, this game is majestic. It's really powerful. No other game tells stories like this game. If you've ever played Skyrim and thought, well, what would happen if instead of being the dragonborn and killing dragons, I instead became a Jarl of a land and then made it so that all children had to work in coal mines? Oh, and also I'd get married to my horse because you know you could do that now in this game, yes? We're no longer in the world of what Todd Howard says is right or wrong. Welcome to Crusader Kings 2, where everything is just wrong. At the beginning of the game, we don't really have much to show off. We just hold Angerman land and that land on its own is pretty rubbish if I'm honest. But we are going to have one advantage. Because I want this video to actually last and not just have my character die of gout in about four minutes time, throwing all of my plans into chaos, I'd like to stick with Harry of Angerman land. And so we're going to be bestowing him with the trait of immortality. This trait is completely irrelevant in the sense of this exploit. It just makes my life as recording this video oh so much easier. And there we go. We've made good old Harry an immortal, meaning he can no longer die in this game. Well, he can technically be slain in battle, but he can't die from diseases or old age. Now, in terms of focus, we need to make this guy completely war focused because we are just sending him into battle after battle. Trust me, this man is not going to see anything other than warfare for the entirety of this game. You know, whilst Harry's on his quests, he wants to become exalted among men. He wants to have so much prestige that his name lives on in the annals of history. Perfect. That's going to be this man's mission. Now we need to pick a council. These guys are going to be helping us with our day-to-day -day running of the country. And in terms of actual importance, the only member of the council which actually truly matters to us is going to be the steward. So we need to make sure we hire a very good steward. So let's invite a noble to court. This man here, Yungvar, he has 15 stewardship and consequently he's going to be perfect. We're going to appoint him as a steward and we'll get back to him later. Splendid. There we go. Our council is formed. Now, your council can do basically whatever they like, excluding your steward who has a very important job. Our steward needs to be building our legend and by doing so he's going to sit in our province of Angerman land and generate 1.5 prestige per month. Remember ladies and gentlemen, prestige is currency for us. Our marshal meanwhile, just have him on organizing the army. He's going to be improving our commanders, kind of, and also reducing the cost of the maintenance of our retinues. Speaking of which, we need to get building them. So there are two forms of military in this game, a levy and a retinue. Your levy is relatively simple. This is the amount of peasant farmers you can somehow convince to hold a spear and charge in a general direction. Your retinues, however, they're much, much more important. These are the men who are effectively going to be laying down their lives as trained soldiers of a standing army. Now, the reason I've decided to play as a Germanic tribe is that the Germanics have a couple of special bonuses. You see, the Germanics all come from tribe provinces, which in terms of an economy are utter garbage. They provide literally nothing, but all tribal provinces effectively have an earthen hill fort. This very basic building, which costs only 30 gold to construct, provides a base retinue size of 100. This base retinue size is then multiplied by the fact that we're Germanic and also that we're a count, and that somehow manages to end up by having our retinue cap being roughly at 551. Now a retinue cap of 551 might not sound good, but what it actually means, ladies and gentlemen, is that we can have an absolutely metric ton of tribal warriors. An army much larger than we technically should have this early in the game. But anyway, that's all exciting fun stuff for the future. Before then, we need to get our country up and running. That's exactly what we're going to do. So what are we going to need to do to get our country up and running before we can actually start conquering the world? So what we're going to need is a large retinue. Now, the Germanic tribes have access to a very unique retinue, which is very, very powerful for how much it is. This is, of course, the Light Infantry's group of tribal warriors. Now, these are just 150 dudes. They cost 25 prestige to make, and they have a projected monthly cost of around 0.02 prestige. Of course, they're going to cost 0.23 because they're currently growing, but as you can see, for 150 men, we're going to be taking up 104 of our retinue cap usage. Now, if we were to pick these guys here, even though there's still only 150 men, their retinue cap usage is 170 as opposed to this one's 
105, making it much more value for money to just have an army of only tribal warriors. Imagine effectively the hordes of the Mongol Empire, but instead of having horsemen, we just used a bunch of blokes with sticks, and of course they were all angry men from Angerman land. So that's exactly what we have, we just have a bunch of angry dudes. Now what are we going to do with our angry dudes? Well, we don't really have an army, and we're not particularly making too much prestige, only around about 2.4 a month, so we could really do with a way of making more prestige very quickly. Oh, what's this, and Jungvar has a great idea to build a monument to raise our cultural status, what a great idea. Hopefully it can increase our prestige, now that's what I want. Oh, and I forgot I need to get my ruler married. Okay, right, um, who do we marry? A very important game, but remember, if you get it wrong, don't worry, because you can always divorce your wife. Now, veteran players amongst you might be wondering, how on earth can you divorce your wife in this game? And what I mean is you just imprison them, accuse them of being a heretic, and burn them at the stake, you know, the traditional way. Now, we're going to get married to just a random Norse lady over here. She's going to do great. She's got some decent stats, and honestly, that's all that we need her for. Fantastic stuff. And well, bam, she's married. What are we going to do? We're going to respect people's wealth and gain 13 prestige, because prestige, you know what that means? That's another 150 dudes for the military. And lovely, I've lost the trait wounded. Splendid. As you can see, our army is growing rather nicely. Now, what do we do with our army? Because we have technically quite a small army, it could really do with growing, but we need to actually start getting it invested and used in the world. Now, at the moment, we don't have that many men. We have a very small presence in terms of the world map, but what we do need to start doing is making money in prestige. And as a Viking, the best way to do such a thing is to go out and raid. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to raise up one final squad of tribal warriors, and now we suddenly have 78 tribal warriors who are generating another 12 dudes per month. They're going to take quite a while to get filled up to their maximum size, but don't worry, we have our glorious levied peasant farmers to help out with bulking out our army. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our king and all of the lovely dudes who we've managed to convince to join us, and convince them that we're going to need to start raiding, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get our army set in raiding mode, load them up onto a boat, and we're going to sail on over all the way round here to a lovely region in Brittany. Oh, it's Brokri, or Brorek, I have no idea. Now we're picking on this old 50-year-old dude for the sole reason that he has some money and a very small army, and we're going to be borrowing all of that. Ooh, the monument promised by Yungvar has finished upon unveiling a statue. There is a crowd smiling and lots of rounds of applause is lovely. 200 prestige we gain from that, or we can lose the trait proud and gain humble. Who wants to be humble? Screw it, 200 prestige! I want to be awesome! Now with that 200 prestige, you know what we can do? Bam, we're raising up our forces. And so the sieging has commenced of Broek. Whilst we're here, we are actually just here to steal gold. As long as we sit in this province, gold is going to get carried on over to our boats, which you'll notice can carry 140 gold pieces. And that's hopefully what we're going to be walking away from here with. Now there's some loot hidden behind those walls, but we need to siege down the castle first in order to get to it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And well, bam, there we go. We can siege down even more and steal more loot. Good stuff. I've discovered that this province right here is absolutely perfect. It's got a fair bit of gold, which we're going to be able to borrow. So that's exactly what we're going to do. There we go. Let me steal it. Lovely stuff. And our boat is almost full. You know what? I think that's all the looting we needed for one day. So let's load ourselves back onto our boats and sail all the way home with our fantastic new gift of gold. And of course, whilst we've been away, we've been investing our prestige into a new army, which has been leveling up over here. Now, the only downside is we've managed to hit our retinue cap. We're using up 525 of our glorious retinue cap, but it matters little. There we go. Influx of loot is had. Glorious stuff. Now, we could really do with expanding a little bit, because by expanding, we can increase the amount of retinue we can field. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Down to our south, we have Ragnar of Mepe land, and uh, Ragnar of Mepe land, he doesn't have much land, but what he does have is land which we can occupy. Now, we're going to do a border dispute. It's not a good effective way of doing a war because it's going to cost us 100 prestige. And it's also going to upset a lot of Germanic people. But honestly, it's kind of necessary so that we can field a massive army and take out all of the other religions to our north. Oh, lovely. Do we have a chance to duel the enemy leader? Of course we do. Right, we'll duel him. Splendid. I'll walk away victorious and he'll walk away with severely injured. Splendid stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just bonus prestige for me, and that's very important. And what's this? The Catholic King of Bavaria has sent a missionary to tell me about Jesus. Right, we can't allow Catholics in our realm. Burn him. Just a bit of the old sizzle. Anyway, glorious, our border dispute has ended, and we have won the war. Now, what does winning a war mean? Well, it's quite important. And the reason why is because by controlling this land, we now have access to the metal pad tribes of Van Hillfort, which increases our retinue size by 100. Now, what that actually means is our retinue size 
size has actually doubled up to 1100, meaning we can just spam out a couple more units of retinue. Glorious stuff indeed. Now our retinue is up to 1.5k, which considering we're a garbage tribe in the middle of nowhere, is a little bit too large. Oh, and great, my wife has died of pneumonia, but it's okay ladies and gentlemen, because she provided us with two children. That's fantastic. So uh, we're going to need another wife now actually. Hopefully one that can last a little bit longer, that would be fantastic. Okay, you know what, I think we're ready to go to war. You want to know what's so great about having a retinue and going to war? You can sit your army on top of the enemy capital and then hit the declare war button. I know, and they tried to stop this exploit, but for some reason uh, it doesn't particularly work. So here's what we're going to do ladies and gentlemen. To demonstrate the true power of warfare, what you want to try and do is get your army perfectly ready and positioned to invade and we're going to see that our army will arrive in six days time there we go three days time one day time there we go so as soon as we end this button our army arrives in this province so what we're going to do is we're going to declare war and say that we're going to take this province which we're about to arrive in and it's time for the old slam and jam surprise invasion oh it works like a charm i'm sorry but we have a thousand dudes and you have literally nothing and your armies cost gold do my armies cost maintenance no they don't their maintenance is in prestige for some unknown reason and just by being at war we generate prestige which is fantastic anyway bam there we go siege complete let's siege down kimi as well and has that oven hill fort been completed it has you know what that means ladies and gentlemen yep retinue cap up to 1.6k oh no that's the good stuff anyway our occupation has completely worked and we can now actually peace out glory success ah we have won the war and have we gained an earthen hill fort nope we need to build another one fantastic now as we don't actually have really enough money for my liking we're going to need to go raiding again we only have 100 gold ducats that's not enough so it's time to raise up our fleet of ships we are, we now have 18 ships i know it's not quite the royal navy but it's getting close and we're gonna throw our small army of retinues into the boats and go to war now where's looking nice and wealthy and doesn't have too many men to defend it well of course it would be good old bruges over here which is currently getting sieged down by some absolute madman so we're going to sail on down and um observe the wars of the european powers and partake in them by doing absolutely nothing other than stealing gold. <laughs> What's this? Every day that passes, my wife keeps stuffing herself like a goose. So much for moderation. We need a larger bed. How is that? This How big is she? What is it? What have you done to my wife? Okay, fine. That's fine, game. You know what? That's perfectly acceptable. That's just the way it is sometimes. Right. We need a nice province full of gold and it would appear Bruges is just getting sieged down so we can't borrow that. What about Paris though? How's Paris feeling? I feel like Paris has enough of a garrison to take technically scare us off, but this random province of Zealand here, however, this is perfect raiding potential. So the raiding of Zealand has begun. Oh my goodness, and it would appear the, the rebels are immediately trying to throw themselves onto us. Oh, fantastic. Please, can we leave the battle? This is not profitable in any way. Oh my goodness, yeah. Don't fight rebel stacks with much more men than you do. You will lose. And apparently I have the chance to duel the enemy commander. Probably best we don't and just choose the gain prestige option. But hey, with all of that brand new prestige and the fact that we've got a couple more earth and hill forts built, we're going to be able to double our retinue up to, um, how many men? 2,000. 2,000 retinue cap or 3,000 actual men. This is fine. This seems perfectly balanced game. If we actually end up with an army of 3,000 just to to put this into perspective, that is actually more men than the entirety of the Kingdom of Bavaria right here can field, okay? They can field 3,000 dudes. We can field much more than that for some reason. You can field 3.3k. <gasps> we have a new son. It's Gandalf Harrison. Of course that makes sense because he's the son of Harry. I love this game's naming system. But we could really do with expanding our borders now that I think about it. Where is some nice valuable land? Oh, pure harmor over here. 2.8 in terms of actual county value. I mean, our capital's worth 3.8 free but that that is absolutely fantastic for sweden considering it's 877 and this is finland ladies and gentlemen it's worth 2.8 this is a prime territory right here how many men does this guy have 768 he hasn't even got a good army you know what that means it's wartime now what we're going to be doing we need to go to war and we're going to pick the nation of pajamanana over here just to try and steal their capital now they're of course a different religion and consequently that makes it much easier for us to actually invade them because uh, you know they're a different religion Religion, so nobody really minds. Oh yeah, here we come. It's the big battle. His 1,000 dudes versus my 2,000 dudes. So he's going to have a defensive bonus and we're going to take a crossing penalty. So on paper, this is a terrible fight for us, but it matters little because of 
just how awesomely powerful we are. Oh my goodness, I lost the jewel. How did I lose the jewel? He had a combat skill of 10. How many did we have? We had 67. And there we go. Time to siege down this lovely province. There's some good land in here, I know it. It's got an earth and hill fort. It's perfect. Bam, there we go. The war is almost completely won now. Our character is just so powerful. There we go. The war is complete. We're going to take the province. Glorious stuff. We now control five different territories, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what that means? Our retinue size is now 2.7k. And what are we going to do with the 100 prestige we gain from winning that war? Train up another, I don't know, 700 worth of retinue. Perfect. Our military force is downright absolutely ridiculous. So because we have our glorious councilman over here working on building a legend, this means each year we have a 26% chance of just a group of warriors getting raised. Now these warriors want to go to war. If they don't get to go to war, they get upset and they get angry. So they just want war, war, war. And luckily that's exactly what we're going to be able to offer them. So we're going to merge them up, throw ourselves on round. We now have technically an available military force of 5,800 men, which is downright ridiculous. I mean, that's almost twice the field of war manpower of Denmark, which as you can see on paper is much larger than ours. And also it's much more valuable because I mean, this one province of Skane has about as much tax worth as the entirety of our nation, but it doesn't have as many men with pointy sticks and that's where they lose out. Now, technically speaking, we are over our domain size. And what does that mean on paper? Well, it technically means the game's going to start slowing me down because I have this much land. Instead of being able to field a thousand men from your castles, you'll only be able to raise 800 because of how much land you have to control. In the case of us, however, it doesn't matter because our men do not come from our domains. They come from our retinue instead. Consequently, we can have much more of them. You know what we're going to do with our men? I've just come up with a fantastic idea. We're going to go for another war, but this time a big war, a very, very big war. You only get to do this once, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to be doing a subjugation war. Now, we could do a subjugation war on, say, the entirety of Shvipod over here, but that's actually a bit of a faff. Instead, we're going to do a massive subjugation war on this entire region of Norway. This looks fantastic. The guy's Norse, but if we use subjugation or force vassalization, oh, now that would be good. But I actually think subjugation would do us a little bit better than vassalization. After all, we don't need vassals, we just need earth and hill forts. So let's go to war once again with our mad lad group of 3,400 dudes who are retinues and consequently fight better than just regular infantry. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to attack them before they actually have time to raise up a good army. You know, we're going to actually raise up a levy of our own and just have that follow us around and siege down more land. Oh my goodness, the Battle of Namudal. It's been ages since I've felt so invigorated by battle. Oh yes, there we go. So we're doing great and consequently we're going to be upgraded from being a skilled tactician to being a brilliant strategist and we're going to gain proud, although I'm pretty sure we already have proud. But I mean, brilliant strategist just means our martial skill is so very good. We fight so well, we siege so well, everything we do is just amazing. And what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily make it so that our retinues do not reinforce. By doing this, it means we don't spend prestige on them. So they're a little bit cheaper to field, but as a result, they'll stop reinforcing their 19 dudes a month. And this actually puts us down at the amount of prestige we should be paying per month for apparently 3,500 men. And that's 1.4 prestige. 1.4 prestige a month just to keep up this working army of 3,500 men. I know, that's ridiculous considering that's the same amount of prestige which our bloody steward generates from sitting in this province over here summoning men out of thin air. It's crazy what you can do with this game. Anyway, the war is basically complete. I'm just going to siege down this province for fun. And then job done. We're going to end up with a ridiculous amount of land. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. It's subjugation time. Offer peace, enforce demands. All of that land is now ours. Ah, splendid stuff. He has been subjugated. This, this war has gone great. Because we now control so much land, once again, our retinue cap increases to 3.3k. Now, what we're going to build are a bunch of shipbuilders. They cost 200 prestige to actually build, but they increase the amount of ships we can have by about seven. So they're relatively valuable. You know what? In order to get even more ships, we need even more coastline. And so for that, we're going to invade Finnmark. It makes sense. Trust me, Finnmark, you've got to go down. Thank you very much. You're a bunch of pagans. It's time to take Finnmark, ladies and gentlemen. Bam, the invasion of Finnmark went great. We can now offer our peace, enforce our demands. There we go. Another piece of land added to our glorious list of land stuffs. Does this have an earth and hill for it best have one? Oh, of course it does. Oh, you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. 4.3k retinue cap. Oh, let's bring our army down to the south. Now, do we have a large enough fleet to move this army? Yes, just. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise that fleet of ours. And with these 57 boats, we're going to be able to turn on raiding, throw our army 
army onto said boat and we should be able to actually raid literally anywhere with 4,000 men. Don't really think there are many armies which can actually stand up to us. Now it does always help to raid areas at war because that means the AI just doesn't actually look at you but another great place to raid is of course Venice. Now Venice doesn't actually have many dudes. They have 1,800 men so you know what we're going to see if we can sail our entire raiding fleet round to Venice. I have no idea if this is going to work but I really hope it does. These retinues how much are they costing us? 0.5 a month. What is this? Why is it only 0.5? There's literally 4,600 men. This can't be a 0.5 army. That's the amount of prestige we gain from bloody being proud. Oh this is terrible. This game what have you done? You've made a mistake. Right let's land our army in Venice. It's raiding time. Oh yeah immediately just kill everyone and now it's time to loot. See Venice they have a lot of money. They hide a lot of money. It's all in those walls. We know it is and we're going to be leaving this place with hopefully 570 gold. So we're bam we literally crack open the walls of Venezia and 98 gold becomes ours. Oh and what's this? A bunch of cattles? Oh let's split the loot again. 100 prestige. Thank you very much. That's enough maintenance to keep this army going for like the next 40 in-game years. Splendid stuff indeed. Already we've managed to have 178 gold loaded onto these boats which is lovely but you know there's always more gold to be had because there's a bunch of cities in here which all need to be burnt down. Thank you very much. It doesn't matter that you have a garrison of 1,000 men. Go another 47 gold immediately secured. What's this? There must be some way to get into Venezia. This city might be well defended but with control over both land and sea I have a distinct advantage. Oh I have a good idea. A full assault from the land and sea will crack their defenses. We will spread pillage through the countryside. There's not much countryside around here if I'm honest so let's do a full assault from land and sea. Twas a great victory. Hardly any losses taken on our side. That's brilliant. I mean not that losses really matter because for some reason we reinforce our army whilst sieging. Why? Why is this allowed? And it's not even a small amount of reinforcement. It's 70 men a month. That's a lot of reinforcement. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love this game. I really do. Anyway, there we go. We've almost sieged down the entirety of Venice. And I was right. We have almost filled up an entire boat with just the gold we've generated from Venice. What are we going to do with this gold? Probably make statues which improve prestige. That's genuinely the only thing I can think of. And there we have it. The entirety of Venice has been sieged. We've gained 485 gold. I kind of want to make it even more. So let's hop back on our boat and land in Segna over here. Let's have a bit more of a siege time. What was that battle? 340 men killed, zero losses. How? We did a landing. What have we done to you, CK2? What have we done? <laughs> this game's broken now. Oh, I love you, CK2. Don't change. Don't ever change. You perfectly balanced, mischievous game. Oh my goodness. We've also got Dan, our brand new marshal over here, who apparently reduces the retinue maintenance cost by 21%. You know, because that's perfectly balanced as well. Thank you. All right, we're just going to spam out more retinues. We might as well go right the way up to the limit. Push it to the limit. How many men can we have? 9.9k. Sure. One title can be created. Kingdom of Lapland. You know what? Screw it. Let's make the Kingdom of Lapland. Bam. <laughs> This has been worth it. I have no idea what that means, but we've just changed the color of our country and I presume increased, yep, increased the amount of retinue we can have. Of course we have. Sadly, we can't gain prestige at the moment just because of the amount of retinue growth we're going through. We're gaining 132 soldiers a month, so it's going to take a while to get our standing army up and running, but soon it's going to be there. Now, I could really do with some more coastal provinces and for that reason, I'm going to invade Sata Kunta over here. Uh, it's a, another Finnish province with the basic sole intent of having it provide me with a couple more boats because more boats means more looting and more looting is more profit really we've got some absolutely terrifying commanders like just look at this 23 marshal 23 marshal and 19 all right anyway let's go to war claire war love this region here it's not very valuable but you know it's worth it it's going to increase our retinue cap what have they got they've got an army of 1300 men where are they sending the men who knows but they appear to be running away running to our lands perhaps oh that's interesting do they know that they can't actually run there is no escape having 1300 men does not help you from the fact that we have many many more all right they're sieging down my capital what a glorious choice it would appear you have chosen death and consequently you are now completely and utterly eviscerated perfect a glorious success i'm going to hold a great blot which is basically where we clean out our prison of all of the uh, various people in the form of human sacrifices it's a great way of generating prestige there we go 25 prestige another 50 prestige there and another 25 prestige there perfect stuff you know with all of the money we have we're also going to build ourselves another temple in 
in this holding because you know we might as well good stuff and let the celebrations begin now our army is actually so big we can't even store it in our own lands because of just the physical weight of how many dudes we have so uh we need to improve our capital so that we can actually just station our military there I'll tell you what we could do with we could do with taking a province in say england or somewhere with more supply and then just keeping it what if we for example invaded Brittany? is such a thing possible conquest of leon would they be okay with that and they've got 1800 dudes i'm not gonna get told off for this am i no this is perfectly fine it's gonna increase germanic moral authority as well right let's um let's actually go for kernev that's even more valuable bam we want kernev it's wartime so let's load up our army onto a boat and bam load the army onto the boat and sail all the way over to Brittany. this land is going to belong to us and here we go we found the army of Brittany. so let's drop our small force of 7600 men on top of them oh we're bam another 200 prestige for free lovely stuff and it's occupation time perfect indeed right this siege is going great i'm believing we're going to conquer Brittany very quickly indeed <laughs> turns out they uh they weren't exactly expecting a sudden invasion from the uh coldish harshest parts of sweden anytime soon and there we go glorious siege a glorious war and we're bam this province is now ours finally we have a location where we can store our military force the only downsides is this region won't increase our retinue cap by much if we check our military yep our retinue cap has only gone up to 8,000, which is not the best if i'm honest but it's fine because you know we can now store our army here no matter what time of the year it is and that's honestly what we were looking for plus we can also use it as a staging ground for our ridiculous fleet oh and we've got 3,000 warriors here who just want to go to war uh, we should probably do something about this actually uh so we've got a spare 3,000 dudes who do we go to war with there's all this lovely land which we could have okay these guys here calavisi or whatever let's send over our small army of 3k meanwhile we can have our raiding force uh raiding force i have a great idea instead of actually leaving this area we're just going to um walk you kind of around the side we're just going to walk you into leon which is just next door and i just have you raid there instead and bam there we go we're going to occupy this land it's going to go great what else are you going to use your free army of three thousand dudes for and there we go easy war with a free army fantastic stuff that's another land what has this got it's got an earth hill fort oh you know what that means retinue cap has risen by 800 <laughs> so that's another what is that thousand something dudes for the army good stuff indeed and you know what ladies and gentlemen i think we've demonstrated perfectly just how crazily overpowered the germanics and the retinue can be over here we have an army of 10,000 men led by three absolutely ridiculous generals all of them are completely crazy how much is this costing us per month well i'm glad you asked it's costing us one entire prestige one prestige a month to keep this guy just running for an example that is all of the prestige that we gain from holding our counties so we gain 1.1 prestige a month and we just gain that immediately that's absolutely ridiculous and we could have even joined some societies and gained even more prestige from that if i remember correctly you gain prestige from joining the wolf warriors as well here we go well bam 15 prestige and another plus 20 prestige it's as easy as that ladies and gentlemen bam so there you go an extra 0.25 prestige a month if you get to the top you get one prestige a month remember one prestige is an army of 10,000 men which is ridiculous because that's almost the entire army of aquitaine or the entire army of the holy roman empire and it's more than the army of the byzantines and we are some tiny crappy germanic dude with 11,000 men at his disposal who fight better than regular infantry mind you as well and we are controlling the worst lands in the entire world look at this bloody kemi this province over here 1.4 county tax what do we got over here just a random province troy is 59.3 that's a little bit more impressive look at paris that's 131 in provincial value that's ridiculous we don't have access to regions like that no we've just got utter garbage you know ladies and gentlemen i think this is a perfect demonstration of just how powerful it is we're in a very unique world but we by far have the strongest military might and the best way of getting an even stronger military you don't need to give up land you don't need to give it to your vassals you just want to hold all of your land and control it with a ridiculous iron fist that's how you play this game ladies and gentlemen anyway i've been the spiffing brit and i hope you have indeed enjoyed watching today if you have then feel free to give this video a like as it really does help out thank you very much and hey also so hop down into the comment section and tell me what game you'd like to see next. I know CK2 is not for everyone, but my goodness, I love it. And if you want the return of 100 Statman, give me a shout. And if there's enough public support for him, we'll bring him back. More powerful than ever before. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make each and every one of these fantastic videos all the more possible. Thank you very much for your continued support, you lovely people. And hey, if you're wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this perfect one on screen now, hand chosen to be just right for you. You're going to love it, trust me. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely...
lovely day and goodbye for now.